This is a Tracking the Tropics update with a certified most accurate weather team at First Coast News. Hello everyone, we are closely watching Hurricane Milton, a Category 5 hurricane. The way this hurricane has exploded, it, well, let me center myself here, there we go. The way this hurricane has exploded, it is a very strong, extremely dangerous hurricane. And you can see there on your screen, I put the icon for the hurricane. This is a six hour loop that you're watching and notice how quickly it goes from Cat 3 to Cat 4 to Cat 5. Now it has sustained winds of 175 miles an hour. It is moving to the east at nine miles an hour. It has a pressure of 911. This is a very intense hurricane. Here's a look at the two o'clock advisory and the cone. So still staying a category five through at least Tuesday morning. And then notice that it does show the storm weakening in category intensity. And here's why we can't really breathe a full sigh of relief about that. So yes, the winds will be better for those wherever it comes on shore. Still not great, still a major category three hurricane, a destructive hurricane, winds are on 125 miles an hour. But the other thing is as it weakens, it will grow, it will become a bigger storm as it weakens and therefore the impacts will be felt more widespread across the state of Florida. So it's not all good news when it does weaken because unfortunately it will just continue to grow in strength. Right now it's a smaller hurricane, but again, it will start to expand as it approaches the Gulf Coast of Florida. Where will it make landfall? That is the big question. Unfortunately, models are still disagreeing on where it will make its landfall on the West Coast, on the Gulf Coast of Florida. Some of them still angling for the Tampa Bay area, some of them further south towards Fort Myers. But either way, everyone along the Gulf Coast should be watching this extremely closely. And you need to evacuate and tell your friends and families to evacuate if they are in one of those evacuation zones, which would be running from the storm surge from Milton. Because again, a extremely powerful hurricane, which will mean surge will be an issue, especially with a bigger storm that it's expected to be when it hits landfall. More areas will unfortunately be dealing with an extremely dangerous storm surge. So what about winds? We'll notice as we approach Wednesday, our winds here on the first coast continue to pick up. And then this hurricane is going to cross over the state. And as it does so, it will continue to bring strong winds to portions of the first coast. We could have gusts of over 60 miles an hour. For some places, gusts perhaps over 70 miles an hour. That means we will have some trees down and some power outages across the first coast. The timing of arrival for winds for tropical storm force winds, not even those extremely destructive 70 plus mile per hour winds, Winds, just for tropical storm force winds will likely arrive by Wednesday evening and then that will continue into Thursday morning. When we're talking about surge, whoo, that graphic is flying all over the place, but will land on the most important point, which is for us, the first coast, we could see storm surge for maybe perhaps up to five feet. So this is a forecast from the National Hurricane Center, but what you need to know, surge anywhere from one to maybe five feet of surge, depending on where you are along the St. John's River and along the Atlantic coast. So here's my final thoughts, the takeaways from this. Your most dangerous hours for the first coast, 10 p.m. Wednesday to 10 a.m. Thursday. The combination of heavy rain and the storm surge means that water could enter homes and businesses. So start preparing now and your preps need to be done by Tuesday because conditions will continue to deteriorate on Wednesday and again, Wednesday Wednesday night into Thursday morning. Those are our most dangerous time periods. We'll be back at five o'clock with another and longer form update for you all.